Hey, hi friends. So uh, in the last session, we saw the behavior of a quadratic polynomial on a graph. And uh, we also tried to tweak the values of the coefficients that is a, b and c. And we saw how the graph behaved or how the shape and the positioning of the graph changed on the graph paper, isn't it? Now in this session, we are going to take it to the next level where we are going to discuss relationship between between the zeros and coefficient of a quadratic polynomial. So you know a quadratic polynomial Px is defined as Ax squared plus Bx plus C where x is the independent variable. A, B and C are all real numbers and A cannot be zero. And the reasoning is if A is zero, it is reduced to a linear polynomial. Now, what are the zeros? Zeros are nothing but uh, zeros of a polynomial. We saw in the previous session, zero of a polynomial. So what is zero of a polynomial? It's nothing but that value of x, value of x, which makes p of, p of x as zero. Those are called the zeros of a polynomial. Now we also learned maximum, maximum number of, maximum number of zeros, zeros, of of a quadratic of a quadratic polynomial maximum number of zeros of a quadratic polynomial is equal to two right so a quadratic polynomial can have two zeros one zero or none zero none of no no zeros at all isn't it we saw basis uh, the value of the discriminant uh, or we will be discussing it in further details later, later on but graphically speaking if you see a quadratic polynomial can be of can be expressed in three ways or there could be three varieties one is like this yeah where there is no intersection with the x-axis another will be just touching the x-axis and the and the third one is that it is intersecting at two locations okay so these are the three varieties of the quadratic and this is when the a is a is greater than zero so we we saw that the curve is opening upwards with a is greater than zero if a is less than zero then again there will be three varieties one is this another one could be just touching the x-axis and third one could be intersecting the x-axis at two locations right so at max we see there are two roots here none here whatsoever in this one and there is exactly one here right so there are possibilities of one root no root and three root, uh, two roots sorry now uh, so let us say uh, i should not be using the word roots it's zeros there could be two zeros one zero or none zero at all no no zeros at all right roots are used usually for equations now so uh, what do we know we know then let us say let us say there are two roots of this quadratic polynomial and those roots are alpha and beta let's say alpha and beta are, are roots of roots of px again i'm using the wrong word roots i should not be using roots i should be using zeros let us say zeros of px okay now in in uh, previous grades you might have uh, learned this you know uh, theorem about in algebra and that is if px is a polynomial it can be expressed as gx times qx times or plus rx okay where px gx qx rx are all polynomials where it is also given that degree of degree of rx is less than definitely greater than or equal to zero and less than degree of degree of gx and uh, you must be aware this is called the dividend looks like similar right in in arithmetic you would study dividend this is my divisor this happens to be the quotient quotient and this is nothing but the remainder okay so the remainder cannot have a degree more than the divisor because if it, it is then you can go for further division once again so this is very important point now hence let us say gx is x minus some some or in this case alpha itself right so let us say x minus alpha okay gx is x minus alpha so what will it become px is equal to 
x minus alpha times some qx, some qx plus rx. Now clearly by this rule, this rule, what will be the uh, degree of rx? So x minus alpha is my gx and its degree, degree of x minus alpha if you see is equal to 1. It's a linear polynomial. So hence degree of rx, rx will be nothing but 0. That means 0, it is a constant polynomial. Now by factor theorem, what do we know? We know that if x minus alpha is a, or rather, we know that if alpha is, is a 0, if alpha is a 0 of the polynomial, of the polynomial, which polynomial? Polynomial px. If alpha is the 0 of polynomial px, then then x minus alpha is a factor of px. Okay. If alpha is if 0 means if you put put alpha in place of x, you will get p alpha is equal to alpha minus alpha and then q alpha and then r alpha. Right? But it is since alpha is a 0 of polynomial, this means this will be 0. If alpha is a 0, then p alpha will be 0. That means anyways, this is 0 because of alpha minus alpha. So what is left is r f alpha is 0. That is the remainder itself is 0. So when the remainder itself is 0, that means clearly x minus alpha will divide p x. Right now, when you put, let us say again, once again, if alpha is a 0, then if you put alpha in place of x, then r, r alpha happens to be 0. r alpha happens to be 0 means remainder is 0. When remainder is 0, if you divide, and what was the divisor? Divisor was x minus alpha. So when you divided the polynomial px by x minus alpha, you got remainder as 0. That means what? x minus alpha is a factor of px. This is how it is denoted by a vertical line. So x minus alpha is read as x minus alpha is a factor or it divides px, factor of px. Very good. Similarly, if beta is also a factor, then, then x minus beta also divides px, isn't it? Isn't it? So hence, what do we get? We get p of, we can express now, px can be written as, uh, what? x minus alpha times x minus beta times, let us say, uh, some another polynomial ux, right? Because x minus alpha is factor of px, x minus beta is a factor of px. So hence, hence px will be, let's say, x minus alpha, x minus beta times ux, where ux is another polynomial. Just to take, give you an example, let us say if 2 divides 24, isn't it? Similarly, 3 also divides 24. So hence, 24 can be written as 2 into 3 into something else. Let us say something else. Now that something is, in this case, 4. But... Clearly, 24 can be expressed as one factor multiplied by another factor multiplied by something else. Now, if here, if you see here, this is degree 1. Okay. And this is degree 2. This is also degree 1. That means the first two terms itself is a quadratic polynomial. Why? Because if you multiply, open this up and open these two factors, you will get a term including x square, isn't it? When this x multiplies by this x you will get x square. That means this itself is a degree 2 polynomial. That means the degree of ux must be 0. Degree must be 0. Because if it is not 0, then if it, if it is even 1, then the whole polynomial RHS, the whole RHS will be of the degree more than 2. That is 3, 4, like that, right? Which is not possible. Why? Because the LHS is of degree 2. So hence, this something which was left over has to be a degree 0 term. Degree 0 term means it is a constant term, constant term, let us say k. Okay, so what do I get? I get px is equal to k times x minus alpha, x minus beta. So if you know the two zeros of the polynomial, you know the polynomial. How? Take any constant k and then do this calculation x minus alpha, x minus beta. Example, let us take an example. If 2 and 3 are the roots, 
रूट्स ऑफ पी एक्स ओके फिर अगेन I should not be using the word root. I'm sorry for this. So again, it is zeros. Are the zeros zeros of p x? Then the then p x is nothing but if you see what any k whatever value you want to take as a real value k, and this is x minus two times x minus three, right? Another example. Another example. If minus three and minus one are the Roots again, not roots. Sorry, zeros of p x. Then p x is equal to x minus minus three into x minus minus one. That is x plus three times x plus one. I hope you got it. And then there will be a factor k as well. K as well, right? So k could be anything. So you can you can see it is one times x plus three times x plus one, or three times x plus three or x plus one, or root two times x plus three times x plus one. Whatever value of k you want to take, even your birthday you can take, and this becomes the desired polynomial. Now going further, whatever this p x you got. Let us say you are expressing now by multiplying it, or let us say you simplify this. What will you get? You'll get k times x square minus alpha x minus beta x plus alpha beta. Okay, so this will become k x squared minus k times. If you see alpha plus beta can be taken as common x plus k alpha beta, isn't it? And if you remember, what was our original p x boss? Our original p x was a x square plus b x plus c. If you don't remember, this is what I started with. I started my discussion saying that p x is a polynomial a x square plus b x plus c. Okay. So hence, if you see, there are two ways of expressing p x. One is this, right? Another way of expressing p x is k times x minus alpha x minus beta and another way of expressing the same px is k x square minus k alpha plus beta x plus k alpha beta now i can compare these two x you know polynomials why because both are same so hence i can compare the coefficients and i can say a is equal to k right b is equal to minus k alpha plus beta Hence, I can say b is equal to minus a alpha plus beta because k was a. So hence, alpha plus beta, my friends, is minus b upon a. So hence, I can say sum of zeros of p x, p x, which is given as a x square plus b x plus c, is nothing but minus b upon a. What is b? The coefficient here. What is it? The coefficient here, right? Which can be written as minus coefficient of I'm writing in short x divided by coefficient of x squared. Okay, this is one of the results which we just obtained. Very good, fantastic. Now, if you compare the constant terms, you will get c is equal to k alpha beta, isn't it? If you check, this is c. This is c here. What do I get? So I'll get alpha beta c upon k, which is nothing but c upon a because a was k. So hence I got product of product of zeros of p x is equal to with p x is equal to a x square plus b x plus c is nothing but c upon a, which is nothing but coefficient of constant term or constant term. Divide by coefficient of x squared, isn't it? Now, isn't it beautiful that without even knowing the zeros, without even finding the zeros, you can find out the sum of the roots and product of the roots, isn't it? And hence, you can also find the roots from this, right? So you know, alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a, sum of the roots, and alpha beta is equal to c by a, product of the roots, right? This is one of the Um, findings and then hence p x can be 
summarized as k times x square. So hence, if you see, one of the expressions was this, isn't it? So let me write that k x square plus k x square then minus k x square minus k x square minus sum of sum of roots sum of roots times x plus product of product of roots this is another way of writing the expression isn't it so let me take an example so hence let us say if if roots sorry again zeros of a polynomial zeros of a polynomial 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 px are let's say 1 and minus 2 then then find the polynomial find the find the polynomial how do i do that find the polynomial how do i do that so alpha is equal to 1 beta is equal to minus 2 so hence i can say alpha plus beta sum of the roots is 1 minus 2 is equal to minus 1 product of roots product is equal to alpha beta is equal to minus 2 so hence px will be nothing but k times any k you can take x square minus alpha plus beta so minus alpha plus beta x plus alpha beta isn't it so hence it is k times x squared minus alpha plus beta is minus 1 so it becomes x and alpha beta is minus 2 so minus 2 so this is the polynomial okay whose roots or sorry zeros are these alpha and beta so hence if the if the zeros are given you can find out the polynomial Hope you understood. So just to summarize, please remember if Px is equal to Ax square plus Bx plus C can be expressed as Px equals to k times x minus alpha x minus beta where alpha and beta are the zeros can also be expressed as a k times x square minus sum of sum of roots times x plus product of roots please keep this in mind okay we will be solving some problems in the next session